Shalom. May grace be multiplied to you, saints. Greetings to you all. Welcome to this Apostolic Reforming Movement session. That's what ARM represents. And again, I will always say to you that I am overjoyed to be able to share that which Yahweh has instructed me to with the people of His, who happen to be considered the body of Messiah. Greetings, shalom be multiplied to you all. This is the day that Yahweh has made, and I pray that by this broadcast's end, you shall rejoice and be glad in it. Of course, we know that there are people who do not receive notifications when I'm live. Sister Petal, good to see you. So please grant me one favor. If you know they normally follow us, have them invited, or you can feel free to share the broadcast. Because persons say for some reason they do not receive, quite a few people, any notification of my being live on Facebook. So please do that for their sake, to help them to know that we're here, and that we are ready to do that which Yahweh has instructed me. Thank you. I appreciate those of you sharing. And like I said, there are those who need to be invited. Uh, those in who are familiar, kindly go ahead and do so. Shalom to all of you. If you're new to the broadcast or new to the faith, shalom is a word. Of course, it's Hebrew. And it means peace. But it doesn't just mean the peace in the English context, which is the absence of war. It speaks to having an assurance that nothing in your life is deficient, defective, or lacking. Blessings to all of you. Shalom means that you are convinced that Yahweh in whom you trust has done everything he has to do to have you at peace. And that is where we are. It is not the absence of, 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 of things around us going wrong or, or, or trouble. It is the presence of the confidence knowing that your God is able to keep you and to preserve you in righteousness. So I bless you tonight and I bid you shalom. Thank you for sharing the broadcast with other people. Hallelujah. It's a joy to be alive. It's a joy to be well. And let me warn you this evening that this teaching, shalom, shalom, shalom and blessings, this discussion, this engagement that we have is even more intense than last week, if you can recall what we dealt with. On the last broadcast, we looked at 1 Corinthians 11, 19, where Shaul the Apostle spoke to the Corinthian saints and he said that there must be factions or some degree of division among you. Though it's not for the body of Messiah, it occurs in our environment in the church so that we can know who are the righteous ones. This evening we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and then we look at Yaakov's letter Chapter 3 as well. Amen? Great. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is an extremely familiar text. But it is critical for us to note what the Apostle Shaul was saying to the saints. So shalom son, shalom to all of you. Blessings. Okay. Shaul is speaking to the Corinthian brothers. It's very clear. He didn't say sisters. He spoke to the brothers in the church. And he said to them, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, As for me, brothers, I could not talk to you as spiritual people. Now, hear me carefully here. This is an extremely familiar text. So familiar that many people are usually inclined to miss that which Yahweh is saying in the text. Thank you so much, girlfriend. Thank you, Sister Mish, and others who, who are posting what we're preaching from. Shaul said, As to me, brothers, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual people. Now, from that first line, you must note that the apostle had to have the grace and the courage 
to make an assessment of those who were saved and rightly tell them the exact state that they were in. Just the opening line of this aspect of the letter tells you something significant. First of all, the apostle was the one who made the assessment of their state of being. Shalom, Mama James, good to see you. He assessed their state of being and said, you are not spiritual. I want you to get this clear. He said, I couldn't speak to you as if you're spiritual, but I had to talk to you as if you're worldly. Not that they were unsaved, but the apostle who preached the gospel to them knew that they were not in a state where they could have received his word in a manner that spoke to them being spiritual. He said, I have to talk to you as babies. Now, these are, these are men. Thank you, Sister Mish, and I love being able to share this with you all as well. These are men in the church where Shaul is saying, I can't speak to you spiritual, and I have to speak to you as if you are babies, so far as experience with the Messiah is concerned. He said, you babies, as far as experience with the Messiah is concerned. I gave you milk, not solid food. And people like to talk about this. And everybody in the church nowadays is qualified for solid food. There are hardly any people I see in the church who believe that they are babes. There are very few. There may be only one or two who say to me, Apostle, I'm a babe. Everybody is mature in the, in, in the church nowadays. Because listen again to what I say to you saints. The apostle was able to determine the state of those who were at Corinth. He did not seek their opinion of their spiritual state. He addressed their spiritual state. First of all, he said, I can't talk to you as if you're mature. I cannot address you as spiritual people. And I have to speak to you as if you're babies in relation to what the experience you have concerning Messiah. Persons feel as if they are insulted when you address their state in the church. What was necessary? What was necessary? It was necessary for them to have confidence in the person to whom they were, they were, whose letter they were reading. They had to trust that this apostle and the apostle who wrote with him, Timothy and others, that they knew exactly All right, Sosthenes and, and Shaul were, were, were the first epistle. So they had to trust the fact that, hey, these men are qualified to speak to us and to tell us that although we think we're mature, we are not. Bless you, Nye. Now, this is the foundation on which we're going to build this discussion. Right here. I continue, and you'll always, you've heard me say that ever since I began speaking about discipleship months ago. I continue to observe the characteristics of saints and also, by Yahweh's revelation, speak to the state that I see many saints in. And I say to you again, there are many people who are highly offended if you sit them to their babies. There are many persons who want to tell you or tell me of their spiritual state. They don't want it to be assessed by one who leads them. They want to tell the one who leads them that I am mature. I am qualified. So look at this. He said, I, verse 2 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I give you milk, not solid food, because you were not ready for it. But you aren't ready for it now either. Why is he saying so? For you are still worldly. 
which means your conduct mirrors that of the world. Isn't it obvious? From all the jealousy and quarreling among you that you are worldly and living by merely human standards, although you are the church, he's saying to them, although you receive the gospel, we have an issue to deal with. The issue is that you, based on your interaction with one another, you are demonstrating, he's telling them, childlike behaviors. Shalom, Brother Terence. When one says, I, most of you know the text very well. One says, I follow Shaul. Another says, I follow Apollos. Aren't you being merely human? So you see here, the moment we have got an affiliation for faces, rather than commitment to understanding who is it that Yahweh has put before me to teach, to instruct, to guide. When they say, I follow Shaul, remember Shaul told them, follow me as I follow Messiah. Now, you, this is what I'm saying, this, is, this night is so important. The very person who told them later on, follow me as I follow Messiah, is saying to them that you're saying I follow Shaul. So what did he mean? Is he confusing? No, he's not. This following in this context is not them mirroring the image of Messiah and Shaul. It's them saying, okay, I prefer Shaul. Oh my Lord. This is where they have a, an affinity for somebody. I like Shaul. I like Apollos. I am more in favor of Shaul than I am of Apollos. Oh, Sha Apollos cannot talk to me. Shaul can talk to me. But Apollos can't talk to me. Saints, there are persons, even some of you who have come to know the truth about Messiah and know the truth about Yahweh, who are drawn by affiliation. And we have to be cautious about it. I have said on this platform on many occasions, anyone who's assigned, assigned, not who chooses to, who's assigned to be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher who follows the truth, who proclaims the truth, who I would have endorsed, you have a right to listen to. Because Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit in the saint, is supposed to let the saint hear Yahweh's voice. My sheep know my voice, said Messiah Yeshua. It doesn't mean the sheep know the only person who's saying it is one individual. No. The sheep know that it doesn't matter who is saying it. I know my master's voice behind that face. And I also know a stranger when I hear him. So the following here is not them following as if they're following Messiah. It's them saying, I choose Shaul over Apollos. We get to where we're talking about the building and the, and, and the co-workers in a minute. This is extremely serious. I hope that you last till the end. After all, what is Apollos? What is Shaul? What is Nigel? Who am I? That's what he's saying. What, not who. What am I? In essence, then, we are only servants through whom you came to trust. Important. The saints at Corinth came to believe based on the message preached by Shaul and Apollos. You cannot miss that. Shaul was not conceited. He's telling them straight up, you were able to believe the truth because of what we taught you. This is so important here now. Watch the first problem we have. Some persons have chosen to come to my Facebook page, follow the teachings because they agree with it based on their research. Some persons have chosen to say, well, okay, I agree with him, so I shall follow him. But what you are missing is, or what some people are missing is this. 
Did you come to believe the truth based on what I said to you? Very critical. Because if you remember the preaching from the lip of this apostle, or Apostle Stephen Branham, or Apostle Joshua Bissoon, or Apostle Lambert, Apostle Thomas, whoever it is, I heard the preaching from Pastor Woodley or, or, or someone, and this teaching has caused me to believe Yahweh. There is an immediate expectation attached to it that we'll get to. He said, what are we? We are people that you came to, through whom you came to trust Yahweh's gospel. Indeed, it was the Lord who brought you to trust through one of us or through another. Oh, this is big. You didn't decide to trust. Nobody chose to believe. The belief in your heart tonight, or if you're watching rebroadcast, is entirely based on Yahweh's decision to cause you to believe. That's how powerful you, he is. And that's how, how grateful we should be. To know that Yahweh has chosen you to believe the gospel that you've heard. Many persons were not chosen to believe. So I'll say to you again, many have chosen to follow. But they were not chosen to believe. So they follow based on agreement. Not divine selection. Yahweh through Shaul is teaching the church. The apostles preach the gospel. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, Laura. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 5. It, what is Apollos? What is Shaul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. Indeed, because he's fixing them now. It was the Lord who brought you to trust through one of us or through another. So the Lord, Yeshua Messiah, decided which preacher you will hear to make you believe. It doesn't disqualify the one who did not talk to you. He chose who you will hear to believe. But it doesn't mean because you didn't hear somebody else, that person is of lesser value in the kingdom. Famous text, I planted, Apollos watered, but it is Yahweh who made it grow. Yahweh is the one who makes things grow. We can preach from now until forever. If Yahweh is not within you, and doesn't desire for you to grow, you will be stuck at an infant stage all your life. It is Yahweh who makes you grow. Yahweh's grace empowers you to develop. Good to see you, Ron. Shalom. It is Yahweh's grace that makes you grow. We preach, that is our assignment. Yahweh makes you grow, that is the grace He's afforded you. Planter and waterer are the same. However, each will be rewarded according to his work. Now we're getting into the, into the deep pond here. For we are Yahweh's co-workers. Oh, we are Yahweh's co-workers. You are Yahweh's field. You are Yahweh's building. We are are Yahweh's co-workers. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> this is why you find immature people who have their daily Bible reading plan and who believe that whatever they read in the Bible, they're told, this is you. So how can you have you and we in the same, same thing? Who is you? Who are we? The Corinthian brothers understood that the letter was written to them. So when Shaul says, we are Yahweh's co-workers, <coughs> he's talking about the ones who preached. You are the building. The ones who came to trust based on the preaching. Shalom, Sister Ange. Good to see you. All right. 
Oh my Lord, now hear me, saints. Sister Pedley, you're ready in the spirit. Regina says that now for some reason sounds very funny when she said it. <laughs> saints, we, the apostles, are Yahweh's co-workers. This sounds so simple to some of you, but I know that some of you have heard it on a different wavelength. Co-worker. If you work, and the people around you on the job, and you call them your co-worker, do you know what you sing to them? In reference to the job, for example, in a school, the teacher beside you is your co-worker. The student is not your co-worker. So there's a relationship that exists between the, the co-workers that does not exist between the co-worker and the, and the student. The apostles of Yeshua are co-workers with Yahweh. They are not co-workers with the saints. I told you all tonight, I hope some of you last to the end. So whenever you find a saint seeking to be a co-worker with the apostle, what does that mean? They're trying to do exactly what they see me do without authorization. That person is equivalent to a student getting in front of the class when the teacher is absent to say, I will teach you. What that is called is role play, not assignment. Pastor Mel, you're here. There are people in the church who feel today that they are co-apostles. So they could challenge authority given by Yahweh, not realizing that the building does not preach. He said, you are the building. The building can never build itself. He said, you are Yahweh's field. The field cannot plant itself. This is where you, some of you are going to have to wear a humble jacket tonight. And see exactly where we are spiritually here. And as usual, some of you may never follow again or never, that's fine. But there's a sifting that I sense deep within me tonight that's, that's beginning to occur already right here. The good, good Pastor Melly got him at the right time. Don't even move. Eat if you can, but don't move. The first Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, Oh my Lord. Some feel they can become the pet they listen to. Saints, first Corinthians 3 verse 9. We the apostles are Yahweh's co-workers. When Yahweh finds a person and says, I empower you to be my apostle. He sends that person to a particular field or a particular area and he says, you have a foundation to lay on which a building, which is you the saint, will stand. The one who is sent to the field is never equivalent to the field. This is not about putting anybody on any pedestal and higher than anybody else. I'm talking the book here. It is impossible, it is improbable for you to say you submit to an apostle, for example, Apostle Nigel London. Some of you said it. I submit to you. You are my apostle. Fine. Well, if you say I am your apostle, you've identified yourself as the feel of the building. The field never plants itself. The building cannot build itself. I am seeing too many self-erected structures in the church. I feel, I think, in my opinion, I don't agree with. And, 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 and the self-erected structures, the self-erected buildings, the self-planted fields are sowing seeds of discord because they have no foundation on which they will stand.
When someone comes to you to try to shift your mind from instruction, from somebody you said that Yahweh said you must submit to, or someone you know, their preaching has me where I am. This is not about praise of men here. This is about your, your life tonight. If you know that the preaching of Nigel London or Stephen Branham or Apostle Thomas has you where you are, if you can identify whose words from Yahweh has me where I am, then... Ooh. Yes, son. I don't feel it in my spirit. You corrected them and they could tell you what they feel in their spirit. If you can identify the person whose message got you where you are today, you have, you have a major responsibility to know that anybody who comes to talk to me beyond that instructor has to show me the foundation on which they stand. Sounds simple. When they come to tell you the church is divided, for example, you have the responsibility to ask them, says who? Apostle did not say that. The leader didn't tell me the church is divided. So how you arrive at that conclusion? I told you all tonight, some either wear a humble jacket or they leave the ministry altogether. I'm not playing on this broadcast with any one of you. If anybody comes to speak to you negatively about that which I lead as an apostle of Yeshua's, and I did not declare it, who are you to receive it? The field does not assess the foundation. The field stands on the foundation. The wheat are planted in the soil. They don't assess the soil. They feed from the soil. The building stands on a foundation. It doesn't assess the foundation. It trusts the foundation. So if I did not declare that the church is divided, then who can tell you it is? If I have left, or Apostle Thomas has left, or Apostle Joshua has left, or Apostle Lambert has left, or Apostle Branham has left, someone in their stead to lead a group of people, and that person does not say the church has a problem, how could the building say that we have a problem? If we are, if you understand, as Mama James said, if you understand what co-workers mean, co-laborers, meaning you're working together with somebody. So those of you who, who, who may be inclined to say, oh, Yahweh has really worked on me. No, Yahweh has co-worked on you because somebody in the earth had to be speaking on his behalf to you. Oh, we're going somewhere tonight. The apostles are co-workers. Yahweh doesn't speak to you beyond the co-worker. I'm talking to teachers tonight because some of you going back to school shortly you know just what I'm saying. If you're in a classroom environment, the teachers have got co-workers in some cases. The students in that room know that you don't just hear one voice. You would better listen to both of us as we speak. So while Yahweh is working and you don't see him, his, uh, his co-workers are speaking and you see them. So how can we respect Yahweh but dishonor his co-worker? We're speaking to the co-workers and the building, as uh, Sister Corinne, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The co-workers and the building. The co-workers of Yahweh are assigned to lay a foundation on which every saint must stand. Let me move on now. 
using 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 now, using the grace Yahweh gave me, Shaul said, I laid a foundation like a skilled master builder, and another man is building on it. This is major right here. Shaul said, I laid a foundation as a skilled master builder, solid foundation, and another man is building on it. But let each one be careful how he builds. Now, this is where we in today's world come in. The apostles before us have laid a foundation. We have to be careful about what we're building on that foundation. For no one can lay any foundation other than one already laid, which is what? Which is who? Yeshua, the Messiah. Oh, saints. The only foundation, and Apostle Stephen always asks this, and I ask it all the time. Show me one apostle of Yeshua's who ever preached Jesus. You can't find one. So if the foundation of the church is Yeshua, it means then that Jesus in the world today is not the foundation that you were built on. Can't be. Because no apostle ever preached in the name of Jesus in, the, in Scripture. Thank you, Lord. If your dad tells you, call your little brother and he doesn't come, who did he dishonor? You or, or your father? The foundation is Yeshua. Jesus is not the foundation on which the church of Yeshua stands. So we have to be careful now because there is another foundation that tries to mirror what the first one looks like. That's why it's called anti-Messiah. It's called a parallel spirit. It, in, in context that the nature of this, 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 this teaching is, hey, okay, Yeshua and Jesus are the same. You all heard it all the time. That's the spirit of anti-Messiah. The anti-Messiah doesn't only mean against the Messiah. It means to try to be beside the Messiah as well. So the anti-Messiah in error says, although the father never called his son Jesus, call him that and say he's the same as Yeshua. Who makes that declaration? The foundation on which you stand has only one name. One. That's why Shaul said, I was careful as a skill. Good to see you, Theodore. Good night. Shaul said, I built as a skilled master builder. Why did he use the word skilled master builder? Because Kepha said that those who are unskilled and untrained, they hurt themselves trying to preach from Shaul. Unskilled people try to build buildings, but the buildings can never stand. May I warn some of you that you're being counseled by unskilled people. You're being comforted by unskilled people. Because unskilled people look at disagreement and call it division in the church. Unskilled people look at preference and say that because they don't have what they want, there is sin present. If you don't get what you like, that is not sin. That's called disappointment. Sin is a measure only Yahweh establishes. I say to you all the time, if we don't eat chicken and fries, that doesn't mean that you're my enemy. I just want to eat food with you. But there are persons and they're multiplying who seem to be equipped as a building to look down at the foundation to say, I don't agree with you. Well, let me help you out with this. If the building doesn't trust the foundation, how is the building standing?
Because remember that the apostles are co-laborers. If the apostles are co-laborers and you don't trust what the apostles said, what foundation are you standing on? Because it's the apostles who lay the foundation. And then those who come after have to build on that foundation. And they are building you up as a saint. Shalom, Brother Ronald. Good to see you tonight. They're building you up as saints. I am hearing clearly. Okay, Brother Aubrey. Shalom. I am hearing clearly tonight that there are those who do not even trust Yeshua though they call him by name. There are those who despise Yeshua because what the apostles are preaching now is what he said we should preach. And there are those who disagree with the foundation though they claim to stand on it. If the foundation said I came to set mother against daughter, father against son, how are you and your mother getting along when she hates the foundation? If the foundation who is Messiah, laid by the apostle, meaning preached by the apostle, tells you that you should not be with stubborn, disobedient, rebellious people, how are you so comforted by them? You do not have the liberty as a building or as the field to determine who you associate with in context of, oh, well, the Messiah said I should stay away from this person, but I find them to be okay so I can hang out with them. You don't have that liberty as a saint. If he came to set son against father, mother against daughter, then whoever is against must not be close to. The only way you can find comfort in a mother or a father who hates the truth is if you are not of the truth or you're disobedient to it. No, I'm talking about some people, mother, and they get mad now. Some of y'all get upset when Toby, mother, so come off the broadcast for a while, go drink some water, come back, so you won't get angry when I talk. A wicked mother, church mother in the church, not Messiah's church, a wicked mother, religious mother who goes to church all the time and loves Jesus, will always try to draw you back to error. in the name of respect. And there's so many of you who are too weak to ask your own mother, well, if you are so loving and you love me so much, how could you draw me to that which kills me? If you, mommy, love me this much, how could you want me to go to you in error? Because you acknowledge that the Messiah's name is Yeshua. You said you know the name is Yeshua. You said you don't disagree with Yeshua. So if you don't disagree with Yeshua, why are you following Jesus? That's it, if I just keep croissant and croissant in any part in France and in English. But the English speaker can't say Yeshua. Because say, may I have a cheese croissant? One day some of these people, men tongue will stick to the roof of their mouths. A wicked mother will encourage you to drift beyond the instructions of your righteous husband. To tell you, I respect what you're being taught. But because I'm your mother who doesn't follow what you're being taught, let's get along. As a saint in the kingdom, 
as a saint in the kingdom. The Messiah said, I came to set son against father. In other words, parent and children have a problem. What would be the problem? Truth. That's why the church, okay, let me give you clarity right here, right now. Yahweh told all of Israel who believe the same thing. Oh, <laughs> wow, Lord. Yahweh told all of Israel, because some of you, to this, they don't understand this, and I make it clear to you tonight. When Yahweh said through Moshe, honor your mother and your father, that your days may be long, he spoke to all of Israel. He didn't tell Egypt that. He didn't tell Canaan that. He didn't tell the Moabites that. He didn't tell the, the Cushites that. He told one group of people who believe in one God. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Echad, is one. What is he saying to them? All of you who hear me talk tonight are one. So Israel, honor your mother and your father. One. To the church at Colossae, he said, Honor your mother and your father in the Lord. Do you hear a difference? Because the Gentiles, you can't honor everybody. Breathe, swallow hard. Yisrael was one nation. And he said, because you're my people, honor your mother and your father because you all keep the same feast. You all serve the same God. But what did you notice? What did you notice here? Like with the sons of Korah, when they wanted to rebel against Moshe, Yahweh said, here, here now, anybody who's on their side, come. Or, or on Moshe's side, come over here. You want to follow the rebels? Go over there, because I'll kill them. What did he just show you? If you want to follow error, you don't honor your parents in error. You can never honor a mother or a father who hates your God. To honor means to have great respect for. To hold in high esteem. How can you esteem someone who hates your God? Let me put this out there because some of you need to have these things in your hearing as clear as day. I'm talking to the building tonight from a foundational perspective. If my father gives me a car, my daddy, my pa, my best male buddy in the world gives me a car and says, drive this car. And tomorrow he starts telling me, well, you know, I have a, what, what David Duncan said, I, 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 he'd been reprogrammed. And I come to realize that the safest name is Jesus. I will tell my father. Here's your car key. And he knows me. My children, my wife, my family know me well enough. Daddy, here is your car key. I prefer to catch a bus than be granted a favor by you, a liar. My father will tell that to. Anyone who hates my God will not be my support. I believe Yahweh. I trust Yahweh. I hold fast to my father's principles. Yahweh alone is true. Some people have drifted so far from apostles' instruction that your, 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 your parents who do not believe the truth Give you more comfort than the one who preached the truth to you. The, 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 the building cannot move from the foundation. Dangerous curve in the road again right here now. The building never moves off of the foundation. So if Shaul has laid a foundation, the foundation is set. And the, the apostles who are building you up, rebuke you, 
and you are capable of moving somewhere else, or you don't show up to fellowship anymore, or you just stop talking to the church, and you just decide to label the churches that if you want to label them, I am telling you tonight that you are never on the foundation in the first place. A building cannot walk off a foundation. It's tied to a foundation. You may get mad while you're on the foundation. You may begin to sway on the foundation, but you can't get off the foundation because it was the message of righteousness from within the foundation that has you standing. So my question is, what has you standing in rebellion? You saw the, it's, it, the, the post of my daughter today, and I praise Yahweh for it. Okay, we're having issues. We're having some problems. Corrections are multiplying. But because of the foundation, she can return to the place and say, Hey, this is not about me. This is about what I will be when Messiah shows up. Once you... How do you know that you're in the foundation? It's not about whether you have an issue or you don't have an issue. It's your attitude and the end result. Are you able to be drawn back to righteousness in, in terms, of how, terms of how you think? You can't walk off the foundation. Have you ever seen some tree decide to pick itself up and walk away? Oh, my son passed the word. You, you, you in the spirit, boy. I tell you, Regina really helped me this term. You in the spirit, son. The only time you see a building moving is when there's destruction. Something has to be ripped up for it to move. So we have to be careful about how we lay the foundation. If I correct you, you can find somebody else to comfort you away from what I say then you are not a part of the foundation. Something is wrong. Or repent and find your way quickly. Show me your root. Preach, Lorene. <laughs> Show me your root. If you are rooted in the doctrine you've heard, how can rebuke move you from it? How? So he said, one foundation is laid, and that is Yeshua, the Messiah. Not a name, not one of the names, not one of many names, he mentioned who the foundation is. It is not Yeshua or Jesus. It is not Yeshua and Jesus. It is Yeshua, the Messiah. One name, one position. Yeshua, the anointed one. No other foundation is, 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 is there for you to stand on. Some will use gold in the building. Some will use silver or precious stones in building on the foundation, which is Yeshua. While others will use wood, grass, or straw oh my lord some will use gold rich pure worth much some will use silver some will use precious stones to build on the foundation but the others who are showing up to build with wood grass or straw here is my question to you once the foundation has been laid, it is now our job to build on that foundation. Saints, you're about to hit some turbulence. The foundation is in you. You are on it at the same time. If you're a saint, can you tell me from my position? You all know me. How do you know someone has built on gold? There is purity. There is absolutely no dross in it. You have never heard me tell you that, hey, I understand the Messiah has many names. 
Yahweh has a lot of names. You are free to dislike your brother. It's okay to dislike your sister. You could disrespect me or, or apostles and, and it's okay. Um, we are all human. Have you ever heard me make those statements to you? Have you ever heard me say to you that I understand that homosexuals are saved while they're homosexuals? Because God is love. Gold is pure. Gold will never have compromise in it. And when I got to this text and understood why people have a problem with me being so consistent is because gold is always pure. Gold doesn't sway in the wind. Grass will blow. So, so, so the foundation is, is, is sure. But the building built with grass is not as strong as one built with gold. I hope you all get this. That's why you are not supposed to be angry when I'm telling you let us stick to the book alone. When I tell you let us stick to the book alone, you are being built with gold. <laughs> but what makes you built with gold? Fire. Jamaicans say fire. This had to be burned. So there is always collision and conflict and fire and rebuke. And oh my God, apostle, he seems to be insensitive. No, I am just letting you understand that there is a furnace in which you have to find yourself so that when people look at the building, they can have great value for you. If you are single, you might as well hear me tonight. When you are built with gold, grass can marry you. Now you understand why some of you are single for so long. Because the quality of what you're hearing has people who built with grass scared to talk to you. My preaching is based only on that which is written. I don't read Miles Monroe's book to come talk to you. Or Shambak, or I, I read the one book, this. But you don't see it. When you, understand me, the scripture says the foundation is laid. Somebody has to build on that foundation. If they're building with gold, then there has to be fire involved. Gold is molded by fire. So those who are being built with grass don't have heat because grass will be consumed by heat. I hope you'll get this tonight. So grass is built faster than you. Those built with grass have a quicker form. But they can't stand the test you stand. So when, when you are saying to them, I don't celebrate Christmas because, it, 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 no, they can't understand. They preach Yeshua. They understand Yeshua's name. But they say to you, but um, what about your family? Is there anything wrong with having fun as a family? Because grass can't see what gold sees. Grass can't handle what gold handles. When your foundation has been built right, you can take the weight of gold on you. And gold says, we will live by one standard. That is called purity. You know what else? Grass can go up faster than gold. But it cannot last as long as gold. Wood can be cut into okay nail and screws and it rushes up but gold you have to dig deep for it you have to then purify it you have to ensure that it's of the right quality you have to ensure that the alloys are right when you put copper to mix it so it can be molded right and 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 when you go through all the process with gold gold is thinking why am i taking so long to manifest shape like the house made of grass but Yahweh knows that though you may take long to manifest your shape, once you have been formed, you are set. 
How many of you don't have family members who are mad at you now saying you think you're better than them because no matter what they tell you, tell them, no, I am not changing my mind. Five years ago, you said that my apostle is false. Is he false today still? Yes. Well, I'm not changing my mind. Do you believe Yeshua is the only name given to the Messiah? Well, probably. Well, you're still not qualified to be my company. Probably is not truth. Gold, when you are in the oven, grass is already taking shape. When you are crying because of the billows, the blowing of the wind, that, and the more the wind blows, the wind, Rach HaKadosh, the hotter it gets. And you say, I can't seem to get anything right. And Yahweh says, no, you're getting right. I hope you get that. You thinking you can't seem to get things right. And he's saying, when the fire is burning you, no, you're getting right. You're looking at things getting right. And he's saying, I'm getting you right. Because you are going to be a building without compromise. There is no impurity in gold. How can you be discouraged by fire after tonight when you understand that fire qualifies you to be pure? But fire consumes grass, though it's built quickly. So some will use wood, some will use grass, some will use straw. What we use is so important because it determines how you look. Remember the scripture says you are the building, we are the workers. Some workers work with gold, others want shortcut, so they work with straw. But he said everybody's work will be tested by fire. And when that work is done, it is not that somebody will go to hell if they build with straw. If they use straw to build. No. He said you're going to escape, but it will be like a trial of fire for you. You apostles who want to build. We have got an extremely major role as apostles, those of us who are, to let you understand, and to every apostle on this broadcast who's watching here now or later, you cannot be a compromiser with gold and expect it to stand strong. Those who built my jewelry, if they ever said, I don't want too much heat because the gold is beginning to glow and I don't want to hurt its feelings, then my, my jewelry would be compromised in terms of quality. What are you made of? So once grass begins to see fire, <laughs> grass begins to cry. So when grass says or is rebuked, those built out of grass, they are always soft. They can't take pressure. Gold is sick. Hear me in the context. Gold has caught the flu. But gold knows I have to sing. Gold gets up, puts on her dress or her shirt and, and clothes, and gold heads to the assignment. Gold knows I have, to, I have, to, I have an assignment today now. And even though I may feel sick, my assignment, although I know I'm not going to die, I have strength within my body, I am going to fulfill my assignment because there are people who need me on this job or who need me on this assignment. Gold is not one who is built with excuses. They're built with solutions in mind. They always say, as long as I can breathe, as long as I can move, even if I am discouraged, I am going to pursue this because my assignment exceeds my comfort. That is gold. Straw, on the other hand, when fire starts, begin to say, well, nobody loves me. I can't understand why nobody could have called me all week. Gold doesn't need a phone call. Gold has the call. So I'm going to fulfill my assignment regardless of how I feel.
When gold looks around and sees nobody else is present, I am present. So I'll do what I need to get done. The amazing thing before I go is this. Those built out of straw or out of grass are common. The world is never impressed by them because they're everywhere. Those built out of gold, you have a high value system. Even on your job, they talk about your value. We can't do this because we know that this person will have an issue. You know the boss, but they're mentioning your name. You know that if you do this, this individual shall oppose. You know we can't do that because this person will not, they know you can't get them to compromise. You cannot get them to bend the rules. That's gold. You are consistent in fellowship. You're consistent out of fellowship. You're consistent on the road. You're consistent in the mall. You're consistent on vacation. But straw blows with wind. So you have to be warned of straw. Don't be carried away with every wind of doctrine. Gold doesn't have that problem. Straw does. Winds of doctrine are always getting straw's attention. But because of purity, gold says, I know me. And I know the fire that produced me. And I know the worker who made me. And because of that fact, I shall remain consistent. The co-workers are the ones who determine what will you be made of. Do you understand why you don't have the liberty to be disrespectful to those who determine the material they used to build you? How can you be upset with me if I've set a gold standard for your life? Some have walked away from the gold message because straw makes them comfortable. Let's laugh, let's joke, let's play the fool all day. And that is called love and fellowship. Let's tell a person he's being too serious and he has to lighten up. And that is called love. Let's tell Pastor Reginald and, 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 and Woods and, and, and Apostle Thomas, it doesn't take all of that. Why you just can't relax yourself and, and let us understand that Jesus is just a name, it's not a problem. We have got a gold standard. Some of you need to type that and put it on, or splash it on your social media page. And they need, they will not understand what it is, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have got a gold standard. Gold is not afraid of fire. It appreciates fire because it knows when you're done with me, I'll be purer than I was before. I'll be purer than I was before. Once you are finished with me in this furnace, I shall be purer than I was before. Hashtag gold standard. I love that. I am encouraging you tonight, saints. Some of you get discouraged when I talk to you. I know it. Some of you cannot bear, and I, it was confirmed today, that's why I know you're always talking to me, as he always does. Some of you cannot bear the constant harsh rebukes that you get. But hear me. No one who builds with gold will turn the fire down because the gold is glowing. My cousin was a goldsmith, so I can talk to you from what I know. It amazed me when I see him work, but he's not in that area anymore. But if you stand around or Google it or search it on YouTube, you'll see. When the fire hits this impure gold, 
it begins to glow. Y'all hear me? Gold, if you, if you turn all the lights off and gold gets a certain temperature, it begins to glow when it gets pure. At the beginning, you may see the blacks, the soot and stuff coming off and stuff, uh, uh, the impurities. But as it gets purer, it begins to glow. It does not hate the furnace. Oh, Rodney, you might as well make a rap with that one. It cannot be purified by artificial fire. And that's why for some of you, when you stood in certain churches before, you never felt pure because you knew that they talk, they preach fire, but you never live the fire. Regina Uncle Chubby said that's, that's t-shirt design. Hashtag gold standard. Boy, that's, that's hot. Gold standard. That's who you are. When you see yourself in that light, and be careful how you're saying it now, when you see yourself at gold standard, then fire doesn't frighten you. So when you're being rebuked by Pastor Reggie or, or Apostle or somebody else, you don't interpret that to me they don't love you. You see purity in the equation. That's it, Sister Fawn. We, have, we got a gold standard. So I bless you tonight, saints. And I look forward eagerly to seeing you again soon. But do not leave this broadcast taking what you heard lightly, please. Buildings do not build themselves. You are built by someone. You are built on a foundation laid by someone. The beautiful thing is, if you understand me tonight, the building is beautiful. The building is admired. The building is out there. The worker, when his job is done, has other things to do, has other buildings to build. You are not abandoned. You are complete. If ever you require my constant attention, it means your work isn't finished. When a building is mature, when a building is complete, the worker, the builders, can move to something else. Because you have a gold standard and you don't crumble in the wind. Be encouraged. First Corinthians three, Sister Corinne. First Corinthians three. You are built with gold. I refuse to build anyone of you with straw. With wood or with, 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 with mud. It's not happening. You are built on a foundation. You are built on a foundation laid by someone. You didn't even have the power to lay a foundation for yourself. So anybody who you hear talking around you, but they teach themselves and they, they, they know and they don't need a person to teach them, run. I will not build with anything but gold. Therefore, grass is not anointed to deal with me. I love you all. Shalom and do well. Bye, saints. Till we all come, that's about the tea. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. All. Blessings and shalom. Bless you, Sister Viola. And all of you took time to share this broadcast. I appreciate it highly. Thank you so much. If you invited anyone to the broadcast this evening, thank you. Those of you on YouTube will be watching this later. Welcome, and I bid you all shalom.
I have a YouTube channel, it's Nigel London TV. On YouTube, if you want to watch these on another platform, if Facebook is acting up, it's Nigel London TV. Someone can type that for me, please. That's my YouTube channel. You can be a subscriber to it and ensure that you know, you're notified when I have uploads. Amen? Bye-bye and shalom. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Regina. Okay, that's there now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yah be praised.